Guys, it's finally happening. The time has finally come for me to actually film a book review. I am so excited because I have been dying to talk about A Soul to Keep by Opal Reigns for months because I read it back in June and I wanted to do the book review. I wrote all my thoughts on my phone and it is taken until August to actually film this review to the point where I forgot everything that happened. So thank God I wrote many, many notes that I have put in order in my review book. So I have this as well because what also stopped me is doing this takes time. I spent this morning writing nine pages of stuff. So this is going to be a long review, but I'm excited because I need to delve into my feelings about the monster romance that I never thought I was going to read, but I'm totally obsessed with. 100% know that this review is going to have spoilers, so if you have not read this book, I recommend going to buy it. Or if it's in your rare haul, pick it up and then come back and discuss with me, because if anyone doesn't like this book, I don't know how that's possible, but I'm so excited to talk about it. So obviously, as I said, this was my first monster romance book, and to be fair, I never actually knew where I wanted to start with monster romances, because like, there's Ice Planet Bivarians, and there's, that's the only one I know about, because I don't really read monster romance, because I always thought it was weird, nothing against people that read it, but like, what do you find attractive about monsters, but like, Orpheus though. <laughs> so I wasn't sure where I was going to start, but I didn't know about Opal Reigns before I went to Rare, and then by the end of Rare I had bought three of her books. The covers drew me in, and when I realised it was also basically a Beauty and the Beast retelling, even though she hasn't said that it is one, and Beauty and the Beast is actually mentioned multiple times in the story, I, it is. It's what it is, because a monster comes in, takes the young girl, and then she learns to love him, except that we never get the human beast, because we like the beast. Anyone who says different is lying, because Adam? Yuck. A white man? No. Beast? Perfect. But basically the plot of the book is every ten years, a dust walker, who is Orpheus, comes to one of the three little villages in this area and takes a bride. It can be a female or a male, it doesn't really matter, but it's basically a companion that he takes with him. Then he gives the selected town a protective spell, that keeps them safe for 10 years from the demons. And basically no one knows what happens to the brides afterwards, they don't know if they get eaten, they don't know if they just live with him for a continuous amount of time, but they never see them again and honestly the villagers don't care because they all suck quite a lot. And Rhea, our main character, was a lone survivor to a demon attack when she was younger and because she survived, People think that she's a bad omen and she brings the bad juju, so they basically have left her locked up for like 20 years. And when the next 10 years comes, they're like, gosh, she's perfect. And you're meant to be a willing sacrifice, and they say to her, basically, you can go get killed or we will lock you in prison. So she decides to go get killed because she might be able to escape because she's at least out in the open and not in a cage, which I would also agree with as well. And when that happens, he takes her, they go off, and she really starts to wonder, is he actually a monster or is he actually like a nice person and nicer than most of the humans that she knows? So one thing that I really loved about this story is how fleshed out the world actually was because we have the human worlds and all the human lands, and then we have the Vale, which is where all the demons live. So the demons can go out of the Vale to get humans and eat them, obviously, and then they go back into the Vale. But there's certain circles of the Vale, so like all the smaller demons are on the outside, and then as you get in closer, the smarter ones are inside. So obvious, it's like you have to walk like a day or two to get to his house. So obviously, dust walkers aren't demons, they're half demon, half human, but they are quite different because they can be intelligent, but demons can also be intelligent. And basically, how many humans you eat is how intelligent you become. So there's some demons that are almost like humans. Like they don't look human, but they're so smart because they've eaten like a million of them. So Orpheus has eaten a lot of humans to be as smart as he is now, but he still has really bad blood loss. So that's the issue because he wants to eat her, but he wants to also be with her and he just wants a friend. So there's like a lot of issues going on with the situation there. But most demons are afraid of dust walkers and especially because they've got massive animal skulls. So basically when a uh, dust walker or Mavka is born, they're like a little black globby thing and when they start to eat animals that's how they get their bones and characteristics but they still look humanoid. That's basically the gist of how that happens but I was very intrigued by how well everything was flashed out. There's also magic because there is like not witches, they call them um like, what do they call them? They have a name for the magic users, like they don't call them warlocks but like basically Orpheus ate some magic users so he can also use magic and he uses it to protect his humans. 
and himself so like there's a lot of interesting stuff like I feel like it was very developed and I'm so excited to continue on because there's got to be more developments with different magic as well and I'm excited. Freya was a really good character to follow I really appreciated the way that she was actually such a strong character like she was not really afraid and that's a good thing because demons and dust walkers also feed on fear so if a human is really scared they're more likely to eat them so there's a lot of situations where Rhea wasn't scared of him that stopped him from attacking her like even early on in the first day where some humans came and attacked him she ran away but then she could hear him stumbling after her and he was in his monster form and Rhea turned around he knocked her over and basically he was about to eat her and he laughed in his mouth because his whole mouth was over her face and that knocked him out of it so she being someone that doesn't really feel fear was a good point because that definitely meant that he wasn't going to kill her which is a good thing and she actually handles being taken and just Orpheus in general really well because like a lot of other times Orpheus has just killed them because like he couldn't handle being around them for long but like, the longest one he had maybe lasted three weeks and that's because they got their period and he killed them so that's a drama so obviously like like Rhea is a lot better at dealing with things with him and he also starts to learn to trust her a lot more because of her personality which is good and like she takes an interest in the things that he does like when he's doing protective charms she like wants to help and she learns how to do certain things herself she learns how to use a sword and defend herself which is also really important and she like cooks her own food she dyes her own clothes and literally anything she does intrigues Orpheus so I just really liked following her and I feel like she developed quite beautifully to becoming this really like strong warrior woman with her demon monster it was a great time 100% though Orpheus was my absolute favorite like compared to Rhea like she's like gone to Rhea <laughs> but I love him I did not expect to be obsessed with him because he's literally the monster and I will say without a doubt he is the most adorable character I've ever read about and I've read Heartstopper like that is a strong thing to say but it is true. He has been alone for so long and he is just so lonely and sad that he just wants a companion because there is a whole thing about the brides that I will get into but he was just happy to have a friend. That's why he started to take male companions because he just wanted company. Like he just wants someone that he can dote on and provide for them and protect them. Like that's what he's built for to be a protective entity and have a bit of love in return. But he's been burnt so many Many times before because he's either killed his humans or they were taken from him or some accidents happened and his first human who he was with for five years broke him so badly because she left that he just he's so sad he's a sad boy to become Orpheus's bride you have to give him your soul and he takes it and then he keeps it so a soul to keep and basically you get to stay with him forever and at this point we didn't know what that entailed so it could mean anything you might be the same you might change into something different and in Rhea's case she does turn into something different and I don't know if this is going to be the way that it's always going to be with each character or it's going to be like a new thing each time I really don't know but it has to be very important because it's basically you have to give it willingly it has to be of love even though later we found out you can just take them but you can only do it one time and you need to really make sure it's someone you really want to do it with. But I know that he's a monster and he's literally killed so many people but I just love him. And I also just want to talk about some amazing moments that all involve him. Quick snapshot because there is many things that I can talk about but this review is already going to be so long because I'm just upset. First thing is the way that Orpheus is just so wanting to just sit his head in Rhea's lap and just sleep comfortably. Something about that just gave me so much joy in my heart because he's just such a soft boy that that's what he cares about. He just wants to be comfortably sitting with her while she like pets his head. Excuse me? The baths? The baths, okay? Because basically he has to do this like whole salt circle around the house. He has to put charms all over the house and he has to clean her with this special oil twice a day because he uses his gloves to make sure that they don't sense her and when he cleans her it's everything it's it's right in everything and at first I was like this is so weird it's too much does he know what he's doing to then being like oh my god because it started to get a bit steamy steamy in that bathroom all I'm gonna say but like Damn. Then that scene where he was so intrigued by Rhea's arousal because she had a dream about him that he's like coming into the room and he's like hovering over her 
And of course, he's like, I need to taste it. So he's like, you know, down there. And he broke her hymen. And he thought he broke her. <laughs> and he was so terrified. He's just like, oh my god, you're gonna die. And there was blood. And he obviously was like, because <gasps> he was like, am I going to fucking eat her? But he was fine. He was fine. But it was hilarious because he's just like, oh my god. Oh, what have I done? Like, it was hilarious. That time where Rhea made a run for it and that fucking spider came and was like trying to eat her. And the Orpheus came and saved her. Then he got poisoned and she literally had to like drag him all the way back. Get him into the house. Put him on the bed. I don't even know how she did that because she's so little compared to him. Like, look at the fucking size difference. I don't understand. And then she like had to sleep under him so that he was sent would protect her because all the demons were trying to get in. And like a day later when he woke up, he was so horrified to find out that she hadn't eaten that he literally like sprinted. He was speed, man. He got out of there got her some food and he's like don't do that again and she's like I'm sorry so as I was reading I was starting to question about the fact that Rhea hadn't had a period yet and I'm like this is gonna happen right this is gonna be an issue but literally the next page she got her period and Orpheus lost his shit so he basically went outside as far as he could to like the salt line and was literally dragging his nails through his skin to not kill her because apparently period blood is as good as regular blood to demons and dust war and then like the second night he came into her room was hovering over her like uterus ready to eat her but she talked him down thankfully and gave him a quickie but you know <laughs> when Rhea kissed his face for the first time and he was just like oh my god and then it was weird though like when he put his tongue down the throat I was like mm, it's a bit weird but like it was still cute like she kisses him all over his skull and he just gets so like excited it's cute it's so cute anytime Rhea got angry at Orpheus it was literally like his whole world was over like he didn't know how to handle her being angry he didn't know what to do like he's like how do I fix it and it, a lot of the time it was because she was mad at him and he's just like but don't be like I'm a good boy <laughs> and she's like no you're not so like their interactions and banter were so funny sometimes, I swear. We then had Orpheus being so jealous of that other Mavka that like when they had the fight, Rhea was trying to help the other Mavka with his wounds. And then Orpheus was just like, Rhea, I hurt too. And she came over to him and he was excited. <laughs> so he's just like, Pfft. She's my bitch. Like, it was the best. Like, Rhea reading Beauty and the Beast to him, and then he fell asleep on her lap again. Like, oh my god. Okay, the sex. I'm not gonna lie, it was weird. It was weird, because I'm used to reading books with penises. And it was a penis, but it was weird, man. It was purple. It had tentacles. It was so large that he had to do a spell on Rhea to make room in there for her. So basically, that spell means that she will never be satisfied by a man. So obviously she's got to stay with him now. It was sweet though because obviously his first human did stuff with him so he knew things but there was also a lot of things that he didn't know. So like he never really realised that women could be on top kind of thing and he didn't realise that women would want to play with that part of him and it was interesting to see him develop in that way because he's the only Mavka that really knows about this stuff I feel and it depends on who I read about in the next books but like the other Mavka, who's going to be book two's person, I think he's really clueless and I'm excited to see how that developed. But it was very interesting, went for a long time, to be honest, but like, I just was like, my god, this is a different sexual thing going on here, and I'm like, okay, that's how it is. The way too that Orpheus just wanted to have sex with her 24-7, like he was just kind of always inside her, he fell asleep in her one time, and I thought that was kind of weird as well, but Rhea went and slept in her own room and Orpheus came in and he was so sad because he's like, why do you hate me? And she's just like, I don't hate you, it's just it's too much, like my body can't handle it. And he's just like, you said I could touch though. And she's like, yeah, but not all the time. So then he's like, well, can I just stay in here with you anyway? And she's just like, no, I'm trying to get away from you. And he's just like, well, please, please, let me sleep here. And she did. It was cute. It was adorable. So I feel like he's understanding, like he obviously is understanding consent like that was taught to him and he understands that and every time Rhea says no to him he understands it but at first he was a bit like oh but I want to and she's just like no but I have to want to as well so I also enjoyed that part of the story because as I said he understands it he still had to learn a little bit more which was good because he 
did accept that. He was just like, hey, this is something that's important that I need to do. And I really appreciate that part of the story as well. But yes, the romance was done so well. I appreciated them as a couple and it was just really cute. And all their interactions and moments in this book just felt so homely. And I liked that this book is 500 pages long. A lot of people are saying you could have cut 200 pages and had the same story, but I don't think it would have been as good because they had to develop quite slowly for it to seem genuine and real because Raya is a prisoner. She doesn't want to be there. He had to make an environment where she wanted to stay and the way that he did it was so beautifully done that if it was any shorter it would have been shit. And I like where they are at the end. It's very adorable, very cute. I'm sad that I don't have more books with them even though I'm so excited to see the world expand. Now the other thing that's very intriguing about Orpheus is the only way that we know about his emotions is the colour of his eyes because his skull doesn't really move. He like doesn't talk. It's like voice that comes through because he's like, he has his tongue and that's where he eats and his mouth's like massive, but he doesn't really like, it doesn't go as he talks, you know, like even though his head rattles, that was weird though. Imagine that though, like you're just walking around, it's like, like it would be so weird. But the only way you know how he's feeling is his eyes. And he's always been like, well, you can see how I feel, but I don't know how you feel. And she's just like, yeah, but I don't know what the colors mean. So I've written down what I feel the colors mean over the course of the book of what I've gathered. And I just think it's the best part of the book, to be honest. So red is hunger, anger, and like blind rage. And there's like different levels of red there. But basically red is like, do not be near this boy right now. Purple was his desire and arousal. And it was so fun figuring out that one because he started to have the flickers of purple really early on. And Rhea's like... What, what is that? And then when she found out, she was just like, oh my god, he loves me! Yellow was like happiness and pride, and we got to see that a lot more as Rhea developed more, which is really fun to read about. Blue is his normal eye colour, which made me really upset, because blue means sad, concerned, empty. Like, he's just a sad boy because he's lonely, so that's why his eye colours are always that feeling, because... He has nothing else. White was fear and surrender. Two very different things, but I really appreciated that was a thing that was like a part of it because obviously he gets very scared when things happen to Rhea. Pink was embarrassment, awe, and love. And it was funny to actually have to figure that one out because sometimes it would be an embarrassing thing, but other times it was a really wholesome thing. And I'm just like, but why are you embarrassed? And then it's just like, because he loves that. And then green was possessiveness, malice, and jealousy. And what intrigues me is the Mavka because I keep calling him that because he doesn't have a name yet, but he's going to get a name in book two. His eyes remain green. So I assume it's because he's jealous of the life that Orpheus has, and probably because Orpheus is smarter than him, but it is still going to be intriguing to see if his eyes mean different things, and each Mavka has a different thing, because Mavka and Dustwalker are the same thing. I call them both ways, though, because it's the Dustwalker Bride series, but then the Mavkas are what they call themselves. It's it's hard to know what to call them. But as I said, I loved meeting the other Mavka because he was just a big himbo. He had such kenergy, himboness, and I loved him. So obviously his issue is he hasn't eaten as many humans as Orpheus, so he's a bit dumb. He can talk, but there's a lot of things that he doesn't understand, and he also gets very intrigued in Rhea and the concept of having a bride. He did try to take her, like not fully, but he was like, do you want to come with me? Like, you could be my bride. And when Orpheus found that out, he was ready to kill him. And he's like, get the fuck out. And Rhea's like, no, we have to help him. And he was so mad about that. And Rhea stopped talking to him. And he's just like, I don't want to help him. And it's like, well, think about the fact that if I was your first w person and then you killed me because you didn't have any help, how'd you feel? And he's like, okay, fine. And I love the way that they like go to the demon village and they can help him get supplies and clothes. And they want him to like be able to build a house because Orpheus built a house. Mavka lives in a cave, so he needs to build a house as well. Like, he needs that. And now I knew there was going to be drama coming because it was going too well. Everything was too happy. There were small bits of things happening, but I also didn't expect the Demon King to come in and take Rhea. Like, she finally decided that she was going to stay, and then she gets taken, and Orpheus come back, and he thinks that he's left her for good, and he was so sad. He was actually basically having a panic attack, but then he was like, no, I trust her. So he was like, this has to be the Demon King. And he just full out ran. Like a four day walk he did in one day and he was just so concerned to go get her because he just hoped that she hadn't left him like his first human. And like yes, we find out that Katrina, his first human, 
is still alive and with the Demon King. So that was not fun because she has this whole deluded idea that Orpheus was a monster when he's not. Like she spun this massive web about how he forced himself on her and he kept her prisoner and he did all this stuff and she's like oh I just let it all happen and I understand that it's a survival mechanism but she's actually such an asshole that I'm like I don't care what happened to you man like she has this whole concept that Orpheus is the villain in her own story when he just needed to understand things because you can see with Rhea that he is a good person, he is protective of her and he understands her needs and wants but Katrina was never able to really express those to him so that's why her experience is so different but she really has tainted and broken him that it's so hard to read about and then for her to come parading in being like we're gonna kill him because he's a bad guy and we've saved you Rhea and Rhea's like I didn't need to be saved I was happy on my own with him and we also find out that dust walkers because they don't die like if anything happens to them 24 hours goes past and then they like respawn so they always like even if their head gets cut off a body just appears on the skull kind of thing but if you crack their skull they die so that's the only way that they can die in the whole world. And of course they have to know that. So then fighting ensues with the Demon King and Orpheus and then Rhea's fighting Katrina and she kills her because she has her awesome sword fighting abilities. But then the Demon King kills Rhea. So I was like, shit. Because then it got to that point where she was like, she was dying. Orpheus was like, oh, what do I do? And she's like, Orpheus, I'm going to give you my soul. So she gives the soul and then her body just disappears. It crumbles into thin air and her soul reminded me so much of Lahibia. It was this little golden person that sits in his antlers and I was like this is so cute. And then Rhea comes back as a phantom. So this is the way that they get to live with their dust walkers forever because they are linked to them so that if anything ever happens or if they're apart for too long she always materializes with him. She can get killed any different way and she always forms above him as a phantom again and then she can go on living her life because the phantoms basically a ghost except they can give themselves a physical body so she's still with him but she can become like ghost like when someone's trying to kill her and if someone does kill her she can always come back and they're just always going to be together and I really liked the way that this actually came around because he does get to have her forever but now that they are both like demon and demon they can have children so he had to figure out how to make that not happen because even though he was like I want a baby Rhea's like not yet brah we're only like young so he had to figure out a spell but that's cool to know that they can have babies so I'm feeling because I know that freaking book two has a baby plot line I'm not really keen about I read about it in the trigger warnings when I started reading the book and I'm like hmm but hopefully it's gonna be cute because they're gonna have like a little dust walker baby that's going to be fun. But they are just going to like live their life. They're going to travel. They're going to have a really fun time. I love the overarching branch of the story. It was done so well. But another thing too that we found out at the end is the Owl Witch. Which is a character that's been like coming in every now and then. And she's been helping them. Is the Dust Walker's mums. And we find out there's about nine of them. So I'm like are we getting nine books. But basically she was a human who like slept with some demon like the first demon or something and she's made all these children and she wants to protect them all but like she's gonna get a book as well and I don't know if it's gonna be the book about how she became the Owl Witch or it's gonna be about a new romance I don't know where it's going but I'm so excited like Oval Rain has only done four books so far so I definitely need all of them to like happen soon but I 100% loved this book and I do highly recommend this to everyone and I always say this at the end where people should have read the book but like it was so good if you haven't continued on with the series I do recommend it like I've started book two I've only gone a little way through it but I'm really enjoying it but I do hope you guys enjoyed this review I have waffled on a lot but I had a lot to talk about apparently but I loved it so much and just please comment and tell me what you thought of it because it's such a cute story but anyway guys thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time bye